Hi, my name is Lindsay Nagorski. Welcome to Integrating Robots into the K2 Classroom. So we know that robots are really cool and they look super fun and engaging and we want them in our classroom. But why should we have them in our classroom, especially our primary classrooms? Well, in elementary school, we know that students are still learning with their eyes and hands. They're still doing things in a very concrete way, drawing, molding, and manipulating objects. They're just starting that tough transition of learning by reading instead of by doing. Robots make it possible for them to work through problems visually and experiment with concepts that they are learning. Throughout the past several years, many, many teachers have started implementing STEM in their classrooms. And research has now shown that introducing STEM, or STEAM, early plays a key role in cognitive development and interest in subjects later on. We know that our students' future is going to involve computers and computer science, so why wait until they are in upper elementary, middle, or high school to start introducing them to computer science and robotics. Why not introduce it as early as possible to get them engaged and interested in it? Robots can teach many, many different things in the classroom. They can teach control, the use of directional language, programming, critical thinking, problem-solving skills, and collaboration. These are all things that I know that you are trying to put into your lessons on a daily basis. 30, 30. You move him, and then it'll be fixed. No, don't move him like that. It's gonna restart and go right here, and then it's gonna- No, I'm gonna put him back. Not only do robots teach a whole lot of things to our students, but they can be used in basically any way you can think of whole group instruction, small group instruction, for individual skill practice, for partner work or stations, even as an intervention. I suggest you start out with whole group and then move on to the others once you're comfortable and your students are comfortable with using the robots and following the guidelines. But you'll be amazed as you start using them how many times throughout your day you think in the back of your mind, oh, I should have used my robots for this. I'm going to have to make a note of that for next year. That being said, many of the teachers who focus on implementing inquiry-based learning try to integrate robotics into as many subject areas as possible, which is a lot easier to do than you would think. You can use them for math, science, reading, writing, phi ed, music, for social emotional learning. I mean, the possibilities are literally endless. And the things that you and your students can do with the robots is also limitless. You can do flashcard review games. You can have your students create a life cycle project 
um, presentation with the robots. They can create and solve mazes. They can write stories. I mean, teachers all over are using these robots in a multitude of ways and are sharing their ideas all over the place. It's very easy to go and find some inspiration from your fellow educators. I've seen teachers have students produce geometric shapes, calculate perimeter and area, test probability, compose music, record dialogue, reenact voyages, and create and use map skills. The possibilities are never ending. Ultimately, our students are young millennials who have been raised on technology. They're not afraid of it, and they're eager to jump right in and create. They are natural innovators who need and relish this technology. Now we're going to move on to two of my favorite robots to use in the primary classroom. They are Dash and Dot by the Wonder Workshop and Bluebot by the TTS Group. One of my favorite robots to use in the primary classroom is this little blue bot. You may have seen another robot that looks very similar to it, the B-Bot. Um, they are siblings, and only difference is, is that the blue bot works via Bluetooth and an app as well, and is rechargeable, which is extra handy, whereas the B-Bot um, just takes batteries and has less, a little bit less functionality. Students really, really love this cute little robot. Not only is he adorable, they're extremely durable, and it's just really cool for students to see all the inner workings of the robot. The Bluebot is really simple to program and serves as a great starting point for teaching control, directional language, programming, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills to our young learners. When used in groups or with partners, the Bluebot encourages teamwork, cooperation, communication, and sharing. It's, you know, it, it looks like a toy. The students, they just have a blast using it. And coupled with an easy six by six grid like this, I mean, the possibilities are really endless. One of the reasons I really love this robot is it really speaks to the sensory learning that primary students require. Um, it's much more concrete because the students physically have to touch an up or a down or a forward or backward button or a turn button and go rather than something more abstract like using Blockly on an app or another computer program. This robot is also really non-consumable um, which is great. You don't need to replace it year after year. You can buy and make really fancy mats that go with it, but something just drawn on an anchor chart works just as well. If this gets spilled on or rips or tears or anything, it's, it's not much hassle for me to make a new one. Um, and like I said, the robots are rechargeable. They come with a base to charge them on, which is very, very useful in a primary classroom. So one thing I have my students start off by doing with the Bluebot is programming it to get to an object on the grid. So if I want to get from here to this Lego, I need to go forward twice, turn, and this is the hard part for students, is that it has to then go forward again. So first we make sure we clear it out and press go. Once they master this skill, this grid becomes really easy to integrate with any subject area. I can put flashcards on here, I can play a Jeopardy style review game. Um, the possibilities are literally endless with just this grid and one robot. Something else that we've done with the robots are mazes that students can create for one another or that I might create for them. And so each portion of the maze is um, 
in multiples of six, so six or 12 or 24 inches. And I try to give it plenty of twists and turns. Um, if they complete the maze, then I have them try to do it in reverse. Okay, so the next robots that I want to introduce you to are my two little buddies, Dash and Dot. They are made by the Wonder Workshop, and they are the most fun little things to have in the classroom. We treat them like actual class pets in my room. They have their own place to live, and we take them with us when we go walking in the hallway or um, we read stories to them. They're, they really become part of our classroom. So you can see they're both a little bit different. I'm going to talk about Dot first. Dot, as you can tell, doesn't have any wheels or anything like that. She does come apart into a ball, which can also be fun for things like morning meeting <clears throat> or any type of um, pass the conch in order to speak deal. So Dot is a, she's a clever little robot. She has a lot of sensors and this fun little personality. Um, the Wonder Workshop does now sell a creativity kit for Dot, which is great for storytelling and crafting, comes with costumes and all sorts of other things. Um, she does have quite a few attachments that you can put on her ears that I don't have with me now that students can use Legos to build off of. We'll turn her on here. So she's just got this great little personality. Um, my favorite is when I pick her up and she says, I love it when you hold me. <laughs> um, you can turn her into a magic eight ball. She sings. <laughs> so that's the eight ball mode. She also Take works it, with a variety of, well, with all of the different um, Wonder Workshop apps, but of course you are limited with the mobility. So let's move on to my friend Dash here. Dash is, you know, as full of a robot as they come, really indestructible. We've dropped him. The kids pick him up from the head all the time even though we go over the expectations of how to take care of him with primary students we know that accidents are going to happen. Dash responds to voice, can navigate objects in front and behind, dances, sings. It, it's just it's such a fun robot to have. It works with all of the Wonder Workshop apps and in using the apps, you create new behaviors for Dash. One of the really interesting things with this robot is when I first got it, it came with absolutely zero instructions. So we really had to learn by doing and by trial and error, which is the whole essence of integrating these into the curriculum anyway. So Dash has a great personality. There's multiple sensors on the head, Again, so you can see he's responding to my voice right now, which the students love. Um, it's great for modeling how to turn and look at the teacher when the teacher's speaking. He's a very attentive little guy, but there are very different modes.
So sometimes in these modes, I'll let Dash just roam around the classroom while the students are working. So there's a whole bunch of different apps that the Wonder Workshop provides that you can use with both robots. Obviously with Dash you're going to get the fun and the excitement of the mobility and a little bit more programmability. Um, when using multiple robots and iPads in the classroom, I do have this one little hack for you. We label the robots um, with a sticker, either a color or a shape or a number, so that they know which robot it is. And I also like to sometimes write which iPad belongs with this robot. Um, for the really young kids, kinder, first grade, they need to be able to sync the robot to the iPad and sometimes they can get a little bit confused. So if you already have a robot synced to a certain iPad, it's easier for them to just pick it up and go. I sincerely thank you for joining me today, and I hope that you've gotten some great ideas and information about integrating robots into your K2 classroom. If you have any questions or want further information, please don't hesitate to reach out to me.